Hi baby, and welcome to my channel where you can learn how to rewire your mind and be the most secure version of yourself. This is video number three in my five part series which I go through each attachment style at a high level so that you can identify which attachment style you are um, and know what core wounds need to be reprogrammed and what behaviour patterns are present with each attachment style. So I've already been through the anxious preoccupied attachment style. This video is going to be aimed towards fearful avoidant or it's sometimes called disorganised attachment style. Okay, so let's dive in. Um, so how is this attachment style formed? So if you had a particularly chaotic childhood where there was abuse present, that might be the reason why you adopted this attachment style in your childhood as a survival mechanism. OK, so what characteristics do FAs have? And I'd like to focus on the positives as well, because there are going to be some characteristics that you want to keep um, and some characteristics in all attachment styles are quite endearing. So your typical FA is present, uh, present hypervigilant, charming, likeable, generous in relationships, but they are also quite intense, um, engage in hot and cold behaviour and are quite suspicious of their partners sometimes. So what core root wounds are present within this attachment style, which you might uh, want to really target in healing the attachment style so that you can move the needle towards secure? So you might have core wounds like I am betrayed, I am unsafe, I am unworthy, I am bad, I will be or I am abandoned, I will be trapped. I'm not good enough, I will be disrespected, I am or will be unloved, and I am weak if I'm too emotionally available. So on top of that, we have emotional behaviour patterns. And what I mean by that is that when, an, um, when something happens that triggers your attachment trauma, you might have an emotional behaviour pattern that goes with that. So if an FA is triggered by a situation, they might feel these sort of feelings on a regular basis, which are angry and hurt and frustrated, overwhelmed, pressured, ashamed, guilty, anxious or offended. So if you're feeling these things whenever you're triggered, particularly in a relationship, you might come under the fearful avoidance attachment style. And these are really good things to notice so that you can see what's underneath the feelings so that you can target that for healing. So what needs might a fearful avoidant have in a relationship? So they really, really, really want from a relationship emotional depth, passion, trust and presence. Um, they like safety and novelty, um, growth, whether that's personal, spiritual um, growth. They like that within the partner and they like somebody who is going to um, grow with them. OK, um, they really value their independence, freedom. Um, they value intimacy and they ultimately want to feel wanted in a relationship. What are the fearful avoidance relationship to boundaries? So fearful avoidance quite often go through relationships being boundaryless. OK, and what happens is behaviour pattern with that is, <clears throat> is that they either don't have boundaries or don't communicate their boundaries. And then when boundaries are overstepped, they'll feel frustrated and like they're being taken advantage of and eventually lash out and deactivate and feelings of guilt will then come up and then they just go back to being boundaryless. They might feel like they're good at setting boundaries, but most likely these boundaries are being set from a place of anger instead of a place of empowerment. So they might shout the boundary at somebody because that person's overstepped this invisible boundary time and time again. So the fearful avoidant blows up and you know, screams the boundary out to them. What are the relationship expectations of an FA? So ones that I've noticed are that no one should ever break my trust. No lying ever. So if an FA catches you out on a lie, they will generalise and think, well, you've lied once you'll lie again. They don't deal with things as one off occasions. They don't deal with it. Um, um, by a, a case by case basis. Um, their romantic partner should be as giving as they are. Their romantic partner should always respect their independence. They should always feel wanted by their partner and their partner should be faithful in thought, emotion and action. So what, what I mean by this is that they think that their partner shouldn't even think about another woman. 
Um, so ag again, as I said in my last video with Anxious Preoccupied, these aren't wrong. These aren't wrong expectations to have. But what the fearful avoidance have a real struggle doing is communicating their boundaries clearly enough so that their partner knows exactly what their needs are and puts them in a best a better place to actually meet them um what behavioral coping mechanisms do fas have so fas will often test in relationships so they will test somebody's whether somebody's lying um yeah it, the, when people say about game playing in relationships it is really just a coping strategy to feel safe um, FAs will often withdraw to decompress. So when I said it before about deactivating, that's what I mean, that they'll withdraw from the situation so that they can sort of decompress and, and, and come down a bit, come down to, to normality. Stonewalling, spitefulness, criticism, emotional volatility. Okay, so that is the FA. So if you feel that you fall into this attachment style, then you now know what your core wounds likely are and what your behaviours likely are so that you can work on these. OK, so you can move the needle towards secure um, with with FAs. Like I say, they're kind of stuck in the middle of, of a DA and AP. Uh, so you might think, you know, oh, that list of core wounds is quite big. I'm never going to heal. And, you know, but that's just not true. Um, if you can target what the root causes are of your attachment style and you can release the past trauma and you can release these beliefs that aren't saving you, you will see your self-esteem skyrocket and you will be able to go into relationships without fearing intimacy or vulnerability. So you will really notice the difference. I hope this helps. Um, if you're interested in further information about attachment styles, then please subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video and I will be discussing dismissive avoidant.